Hi, it's Tom here from Frame Day Services again, and today we're going to be looking at the rewire kit from Blaster Smith UK for the Nerf Demolisher. And uh, the Demolisher is a complicated beast. So, um, there's a couple of things that are different about this blaster. Uh, first of all, its construction is different. It has an, out, an outer shell and an inner shell. Most of the structural components, including the hand grip and um, the mechanism, are supported on this inner shell, including the uh, propulsion system for the missiles. And then the outer shell effectively acts as a cover. And uh, also, just the only thing that's supported in that outer shell is the jam door. It is more complicated to take to pieces, and uh, there will be a few strains in doing so. In, in this build, there is a MOSFET being used here, and MOSFETs are essentially a switching device that allow you to have a low current and a high current uh, circuit that are separate to each other. There's no actual physical um, join between them. It uses chemical reaction to switch. So um, the beauty of this is that you can retain your small crappy coupe wiring and you can have it pass through the back here where there's a small space. The aperture for the wiring behind this area isn't very big. The stock loom runs through here and then it comes out just behind the motor block. Um, now there's very little dead space in this blaster and it looks like there's a lot but it really isn't much. Due to the need to reuse some of the stock wiring, um, this doesn't follow our standard colour coding, so you just have to be aware that there are some different colours in this build. Hopefully the uh, production kit will um, alleviate some of this. It does come with some blue wires and things, but this is the first one I've ever done. So um, I made a couple of mistakes, but hopefully if you follow this video, you won't have to make the same mistakes as me. So connections. This would normally be your stock power connector. In mine, this now powers LEDs, so we're just going to ignore that because it's not actually doing anything. But what I'll do is run through the wiring that you would normally do. So uh, if you were doing this build yourself, um, you could cut both of those, the brown and the red. And then the brown wire would then become your um, feed through here, which would be this black fella here. And then your red wire would become the other feed to the switch, which is this little fella here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take um, the common pin here in the middle um, which is your feed and that comes all the way through here and that goes to the positive on your battery you can see I made a little three-way join there so positive on the battery this plug jumps across the other shell half to the battery to the battery compartment so here you can see uh, the other wire which is coming from the trigger so that's your feed out from the trigger and uh, that is coming back here and that is going to the first pin here which is the gate then you've got the middle pin which is the drain and the right hand pin which is the source on the MOSFET and uh, if you look at how that's wired, I'll just see if we can show that to you it goes to two connections you have across there a 10k resistor so just add a little branch off this wire from your trigger 10k resistor in here and then back to the ground and that's the ground from the battery. Can you see that's the main power feed from the battery? So that conveniently brings us to the next connection on the MOSFET, which is the negative feed from the battery. And that goes onto pin number three, which is the source. So the source this side. So negative from the battery in this side. Now I know there's some confusing wiring colours because um, I didn't have the blue in here. So this would normally be a blue, which is a feed to the motors. So we can now do the final pin, which is the drain in the middle and on the drain you have a line going from the drain straight to the negative of your motors however that's set up and you can see I've got my usual plug-in motor block here and uh, then you can see here that here's the diode and this diode is just a straight rectifier diode and what I've done is the silver end is connected to the positive feed from the battery and the other end is connected here to this run through to the motor block so that just means that in normal operation it doesn't allow current to pass back the other way so it just stops current from being um, passed the wrong way through all of the electrics so it's thereby protecting the FET and uh, if you don't include that um, you could probably run it without it on 130 motors but they put that in because this is a 180 build and uh, if you fully stall the motors you'll exceed the rating for the FET so you'll, you'll burn the FET out inside so you make a right mess of it so it's worth putting that in just make sure you get it around the right way and uh, just to show that this all works, and I'll hook my test pack up. Always test on alkaline batteries. I know I say this every video, but I'm going to say it again. So it saves you melting everything. So as you can see, my alkaline test pack look down here. It's just made from a rapid strike battery tray with a connector soldered to it. So there's a use for all those old battery trays. And now we pull the trigger.
And essentially what that MOSFET is doing is it's only sending the high power current out through this middle pin here and then completing the circuit to the motors, just like it was a second micro switch. If you imagine effectively it being two switches, so this is one switch which is chemical and this is one switch which is mechanical. This means you can keep all this thin crummy wiring all the way through the body of the blaster where there's no space and that it minimizes the lengths of wire required across here so it's actually more efficient in some ways than running big lengths of wire backwards and forwards um, because it certainly takes up less shell space so it's well worth considering if you've got an application that works they do it in airsoft and um, this is just how we're going to do it for the um, demolisher because it's got such a uh, tight shell space so there you have it that's how you install the BSUK kit and there is a wiring diagram, I'll put a link to the page uh, with the wiring diagram. There are going to be a set of instructions from them as soon as they've got those written. Now we have to look at the flip side shell, um, which is, this is the outer shell that includes the battery tray. So in the battery tray, I've removed the battery tray webbing because I'm not using truss fires because I'm not a tool. And I've taken this high current Dean's connector to take a pack because they take up a bit less room. Um, no Tamiya connectors of junk in here. Because it's 180s, it's going to want plenty of current to feed the motors. And then, and just see if we can get this to work. There you go, you can see I've just drilled a little hole down here. And where I fed my wiring, inside the shell, my wiring has just gone through this cavity here. This was about the only place I could see where I could get it clear of all the other stuff. So you're going to switch it out here, need a little hole. Just see this nice useful screw port here. Six, I did a six mil hole because it gave me plenty of wiggle room. You could probably do a little bit smaller. And then there's your Dean's connector on the other end and that bridges across to the shell half. So this would be the stock wiring route and you're not gonna need that anymore. You could do, but it's just not worth it. There's no room in the handle for a Dean's connector. So you have to come forwards. And the idea is, is that when it's all loaded up, this Dean's connector basically sits in here like that and the barrels across there and it all fits in fine. And there's just enough space to close the shell up. Okay, so here you can see it all with everything back installed and all the internals back in. And you can see here that all the wiring neatly tucks down into this tiny little bit of dead space behind the barrel. And that the, when that's uh, folded in, it will fold across like that. And then there'll be room for your Dean's connector to the other shell half. Now, one thing that I wanted to look at very quickly was I wanted to look at the trigger area. And uh, this is a mod by DL001. Um, who is also the guy behind Blaster Tech in Australia. And uh, he noted that he was having feed problems with a demolisher where he couldn't push some aftermarket darts through because they were slightly short and also that um, he felt that this part of the pusher mechanism wasn't moving far enough forward. So what he proposed is to extend the push of the trigger, the pull of the trigger to allow you to push this part further forwards and give you a greater trigger travel. Now what he did is he uh, cut away this section here just like you do when you remove the lock here. I always leave this lock in because it stops new people from trying to fire without the rev trigger pulled, which I think is useful because um, obviously that's a big cause of jams and stalls. So I tend to leave that lock in in most of my builds unless people specifically ask me to remove it. And it's so easy to take out that I haven't bothered in this case, the, the guy who's getting this knows what he's doing. But I've done my own spin on this mod. Now he advocates cutting away the top of here to allow this to move over the top and therefore give you more trigger travel. All I've done is here's the trigger stop I just took off 5 mil here. So it started here, I just cut off this little section of trigger here and this now allows my trigger to go all the way back. And it's very hard to pull the trigger without the uh, spring, so I'll just take the spring out. So if you watch now, the trigger will go right the way and it will go to full travel and that allows the uh, pusher to come a little bit further forwards. Previously it only went to there. So if you imagine that it lined through there, look at how much extra travel I've gained, ready? There. So DL001, originator of that mod, um, clearly a clever guy who thinks about his stuff. So this may be the cause of some of the feed issues we've seen in demolishers where people are saying, oh, my couche wouldn't feed. Some couche are slightly short and the head shape is different. So it may be that you just need to take that little piece of trigger off and you're good to go. Okay, very quickly, you can just see here where the finished LiPo installation is. And uh, this is rather nice zippy compact 850 in there. And then the standard lid will go straight on. There is a tray expander available from BSUK if you want to go 3S, but I very rarely do. So there you have it, and uh, you can see the plug fits in there, there's plenty of room, and uh, you do have to take out all the little dividers from the tray.